I'm Keith from KC Design Concepts and Hyde Motorworks. This is my M50 3 liter engine. We call it the Phoenix engine because it's the original engine from my car that at 258,000 miles and a little too much boost from this. It broke the ring landings and number four piston. So since we're going to build this engine up, I uh, figured I'd give it a name. The engine that I've been running in the car for the last three years, it's making about 400 to 450 at the wheels, um, is using a uh, completely stock M54 B30 rotating assembly in the M50 block. Do rings with gap and fairings and gaskets. Uh, I'm using a 140 head gasket to help lower compression. And it's running good. <clears throat> but since I want to push it even further, um, decided to build something that can handle it. Um, DNF Performance out of Berlin, New Jersey did all the machine work on it. And they also sized the bearings. So I had the proper clearances. I believe it's like 21 to 23 on the rods and mains. Which should be plenty. Uh, you don't want to run too tight of tolerances, too tight of clearances, because uh, that can cause excessive friction and heat buildup. But of course, you don't want to run it too loose, especially if you don't have uh, you know, a really high volume oil pump. And since I plan on tracking the car, and I'm not going to drag race it. Uh, I want the engine to hold together for a long period of time. And the car is road legal, so I do drive it on the street as well. So I'm kind of a, a multi-purpose engine. Uh, I use the Eagle H-beam rods. They're supposed to be good up to about 1,200 horsepower, 200 per cylinder. Um, as you can see, I also have the ARP main studs. They were installed at the machine shop when they align board the main uh, journals. Um, the crank is cut. Um, trying to remember what it was. A oh, quarter mil off the rods and mains and polished. Um, uh, it's also bored out, bored and honed a half a mil, so it has an 84.5 millimeter bore. I did leave the trigger wheel on there. As it was mentioned, I did remove it off my other crank, but I was kind of advised to at least leave the bolts in there because where the bolt holes are, that can become um, an area where the crank could crack at. It's an opening, it could be, and it could cause problems. So, so you know what? The trigger wheel fits in there with no problem. It's not interfering with anything. So, decided to just leave it in there. So, as you can see, the bottom end is all together. I didn't video assembling it because it's a very slow, tedious process. Um, plastic gauge is not the best way to set clearances. But I did use it to check to see if it was roughly where the machine shop said it was. Where they set it. Uh, let's see if I can rotate this thing around. And there's the top view. There are nine to one um, CP Carrillo pistons. Um, the top ring gap is at 18 thousandths. The second ring is 24. And that's what CP recommends for running high boost. Um, as you can see, the deck has been machined. So I should have a good ceiling surface. Um, something you definitely want to take your time when checking everything, make sure everything is really good and clean. Um, this is not usually where I put engines together at, but in my shop right now, because I've been doing a lot of fabrication work, I have a lot of metal shavings and, uh, metal dust and particles around. I really didn't want to take a chance on anything getting in this engine. So decided to bring it out here. Uh, here's the head. 
this was also hot tanked as you can see you know it's all nice and clean um once again i didn't film installing all the valves and springs they're super tech race springs retainers and keepers and i used um uh ferrilla i guess that's how you pronounce it stainless steel valves They're looking good right now. I'm sure they won't be after I start it up. Um, I think what else? <clears throat> oh, I also have uh, Shrek cams to put in it. New lifters. Yeah, want to do everything good. Uh, I have new guides, new chains, new oil pump, uh, new crank bolt. Uh, Stewart water pump. So yeah, um, trying to build something that's gonna last a while and hopefully get some uh, good performance out of it. And a little bit of rust there. I'm definitely gonna clean that up before I put it together. And you can see I did use quite a bit of the. Uh, I believe it's Redline Synthetic um, Assembly Lube. But there she is so far. Uh, I have the cam trays. They're clean, ready to go. I did check to make sure that they were in good condition. You can see I got a few superchargers laying around. Old cams are up there. Yeah, Kept the old boxes temporarily. <laughs> But taking notes, marking everything down so I can, something does go wrong, I can go back and see what might have caused it. I shouldn't. Um, I also did set the clearances on the thrust bearing. Um, got the machine shop. They've been around since I think 1975 or 76. It did tell me that one of the things that kills the thrust bearing is, especially on a manual shift car, is starting it up with the clutch pushed in, and even more so if you have a heavy duty pressure plate. Because when the car sits, um, a lot of the oil drains out of the bearings. And I'm sure everybody knows that cold start up after sitting for a while is not good for an engine anyway. But cold start up and pushing the clutch in and having the pressure plate shift the crankshaft forward. And if you really don't have any lubrication there, you know, a thin film of oil, um, it can chew up the thrust bearing. So he did suggest to me if I do have one of those clutch switches to bypass it, um, the thrust bearing will last longer. And he mentioned that because he noticed that... Um, I did have the old bearings from this engine, even though the main surfaces look really good and almost like you could use them again. You notice that the edge of the thrust bearing was, you know, had some, showing some signs of wear more than the rest of the bearing. And he said it was most likely due to starting it up with the clutch pedal pushed in. So just a little tip for anybody else out there. Uh, who's building an engine and would like to see it last for quite a while. All right, I'll make a new video as I start to put more of it together. Um, if anybody's built engines, you know the bottom end is probably um, the trickiest part. Uh, the rest of it is pretty much, you know, bolted on. There's really not a lot of extra to check. But there are a few things, a few little tips that you might want to Keep an eye on when you're putting it together. And I'll try to include as much as I possibly can. Okay. Uh, go well. Be safe.